Hey, to you guys, yes. So, I'm gonna start the 24 hour challenge right, oops, right now. All right, so let me show you guys the supplies and the place where I will be staying for 24 hours. Well, obviously I'll be looking around the house, around my house and stuff, but like, this is my main base. This is where I'm keeping all my food and drinks. Oh yeah, I have one cup of water. Okay. So I have it to where it can easily just like slip in and out of my, under my bed. So right there. Don't know if you guys can see that. But like right there. That is all of my food. So I have cereal. Uh, I think it's tricks. And I have Triscuits at the bottom. And then I have Fruit Snacks, they're Mots. Um, and I have some juice. So, let me tell you the juices I have. I have Cherry and Strawberry Kiwi. And then I have one cup of water. So, I have this on a, on a notebook. So, like, so we flip in and out and I have that cute little like cute little guy who will be with me this whole entire 24 hour challenge I'm gonna have a tablet let me go grab my tablet my dad knows I'm doing this but nobody else does Anybody can come here and compete in this game. You don't have to be a champion. You can have Joe Blow that just threw the team together yesterday and have a good day. That's right. What are you doing? Doing a YouTube video? Doing a YouTube video? What? Because I'm filming. I'm filming. filming. I'm filming right now. Hi, Bobby. See? Dad, see? I'm filming. Night school. That's another one I wanted to see. Oh. Dad, look. See? I'm filming. You're recording. Uh-huh. Well, stop recording me. Well, you want to know what I was doing. <laughs> Hold on. Where's my parasol? So, guys, I will be in here, like, watching YouTube on my Kindle and, like, working on my laptop. Like, I'm in here where my bed is, so, like, if my phone says it's at 10%, just need to hook it up, then it starts to charge. Um, currently I have it off the charger. There it's charger. Um, yes, I'm using my phone for this challenge, and I have a fan, so. Okay, so let's plug in the candle. Plug this in. Um, I also do have a tablet, so like this will be kind of an easy challenge, but not so much of an easy challenge. And I'll be like, oh my god, that was so easy. Because I'm now going to probably get caught. Oh no! <laughs> now I'm probably going to get caught. Um, I got some fluffy toys and some like, little mouth cat toys we have to find an android charger i just dropped the one i was gonna get it to use bam i'm an idiot um they have pretty dirty rooms but 
like so I'll have like my I'll put my laptop so I'll be able to like edit and stuff alright I'm going to try like, to plan everything out. This is Maisie, everybody. This is my cat. Um. So. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so, pretty sure I have a charger, like a charging point, port point over here. Charging port over here. Hopefully, I do. And it is behind my dresser. Okay. Okay, guys. Yeah, I'm not going to get that. Okay. Mm so we have this pretty long charger for Kindle. And then I will be getting my laptop. And we will just set up camp. We are literally just like being in a campsite, you know. I'm actually gonna go. I'm gonna have you guys sit here for one second while I go look for a um for two extension cords. I will be great. Fuck.
one extension. Mm. Found one <laughs> extension cord. Oh wait, this is something funny that me and my brother used to do. We still do it. So when we find an unplugged extension cord, Literally, what we used to do. Then we used to always fight. So, um, until I knocked him senseless. And now it's just fashionable headwear. Now it's just like a little bit hungry. Just fashionable beside headwear. Oh, get off my head. Hold on. Now I'm trying to unplug it. And let's connect this time into a boss kind down here. Um, Now, Romeo. Now we can um plug in all of our chargers for everything. So gonna... This is probably just gonna be the boringest segment of everything because we've just been talking this whole time, not like getting into it. And oh, we won't be getting into it in like two minutes. Three seconds, minutes, hours, days, That can't get out of here. Got that. Got the charger for the computer. And then now we need the computer. Literally, guys, I am so clumsy. We're gonna need this out of box case. It's getting really hot in here. Oh, I can't get it undone. Here we go. There we go. Now I'm back to the same, same big piece. And you put my soft cover. Should be done. It's done. Okay, outfit 
change. Not for me, but for you guys. Now we're in an otter box. Like this one. Not this red one. That red one is gum. So, there's a little camp. You can see the food peeking out and the skirt peeking out. Let's get down there and hook up. Oh, wait, no, we have to be up here. Dang it. I do not think this through. Ah. Okay, 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 okay. I don't know how to speed things up right now, so I will just be like talking and hooking things up. So now we're talking about what we're going to be doing and how we are going to accomplish it. So we are going to be seeking, or well, hiding in my house, in my parents' house, which is where we are currently. I still live with them. I'm only 10. So we will be doing. We will be hiding and making it to where they cannot find me. So, and then they will be. I'll be in, the, or in my secret little hideout. Just hiding. So trying to keep profile. At a minimum, and you guys will be with me along the way. Okay. On the next is the computer. I'm pretty sure I'm covering the camera. Kindle is already turning on. Go ahead. Put you guys right there. And the last thing is the phone charger. Find it. So, everything is already hooked up. Ooh, my head hurts. My head hurts from that. Okay, okay, That took a decent amount of time to just get everything all plugged in and situated. So yeah. Um Trying to get a little bit. Hungry, so I'm just gonna hold my snap. I'm just like start cooking. And like editing and stuff. This is gonna be a very hard challenge. Um. This is going to be a very, very difficult challenge, possibly, because I do not do well in heat. And yes, I do live in Tennessee. Um, but I don't do well 
in heat. So I'll probably sweat. And then I'll need to turn on the fan. And yeah. Don't worry guys, it's turning right back on. It's gonna be pretty bright in here. I'm getting thirsty actually. Yeah, it hurts. Okay. Oh yeah, guys, I have no medicine. <laughs> no nothing. So if I get like sick in here, I can possibly die. I'm gonna play a story. Resigning himself to another of Crow's impromptu lessons, the big American could take anything from around him, whether it was in the countryside, the town, or someone's house, and use it as the springboard for a question, a problem, or a logical conundrum. It was beginning to annoy Sherlock. Crow straightened up and looked around behind him. I thought I'd seen some of the little critters, he said, walking over to a small pile of dry earth that was heaped up like a miniature hill in a patch of grass. Sherlock wasn't fooled. Crow had probably spotted them on the way up and filed them away as fodder for his next training session. Sherlock jumped down from the wall and walked across to where Crow was standing. An anthill he said with little enthusiasm. Small black forms wandered aimlessly around the mound of earth. Indeed. The external sign that there's a whole bunch of little tunnels underneath, which the little critters have patiently excavated. Somewhere under there, you'll find thousands of tiny white eggs, all laid by a queen ant who spends her life underground, never seeing daylight. Crow bent down and gestured for Sherlock to join him. Look at how the ants move, he said. What strikes you? Sherlock watched them. No two ants were heading in the same direction, and each one seemed to change direction at a moment's notice for no visible reason. They're moving randomly, he said, or they're reacting to something we can't see. More likely the first explanation, Crow said. It's called the drunkard's walk. And it's actually a good way of covering ground quickly if you're looking for something. Most people searching an area will just walk in straight lines crisscrossing or divide the area up into a grid and search each square separately. Those techniques will usually guarantee success eventually, but the chances of finding whatever it is quickly are increased by using this random way of covering the ground. It's called the drunkard's walk, yeah. Because of the way a man walks when he's got a belly full of whiskey, legs going in different directions to each other, and head going in another direction entirely. He is his jacket pocket and removed something. But back to the ants. Once they find something of interest, watch what they do. He showed Sherlock the thing in his hand. It was a pottery jar with a wax paper top held on with string. Honey, he said before Sherlock. Bought it in the market. He pulled the string off and removed the wax paper. Sorry if this brings back bad memory. Don't worry, Sherlock said. He knelt beside Crow. Should I ask why you're wandering around with a jar of honey in your pocket? A man never knows what might come in useful, Crow said, smiling. 
Or maybe I planned all this in advance. You choose. Sherlock just smiled and shook his head. Honey is largely sugar, plus a whole load of other things, Crow continued. Ants love sugar. They take it back to the nest to feed the queen the little grubs that hatch from the eggs. Dipping his finger in the honey, which Sherlock noticed was running in the heat of the morning sun, Crow scooped up a huge shiny droplet and let it fall. It caught on a clump of grass and hung there for a few moments before strands of it sagged to the ground and lay in scrawled and glistening threads. Now let's see what the little critters do. Sherlock watched as the ants continued in their random wandering, some climbing up strands of grass, dangling upside down, and others foraging amongst grains of dirt. After a while, they across the strand of honey. It stopped midway. For a moment, Sherlock thought it was stuck. But it wandered along the strand, then wandered back, then dipped its head as though drinking. It's collecting as much as it can carry, Crow said conversationally. It'll head back to the rest And indeed, the man did appear to retrace its steps. But rather than heading directly to the nest, it continued to wander back and forth. It took a few minutes, and Sherlock almost lost it a couple of times as it crossed the path of the heaps. Vanished into a hole in the side. So what now? Sherlock asked. Look at the honey, Crow said. Ten, perhaps fifteen. I'm trying for the honey Thirty-four. They were all taking samples. Other ants kept the honey. as they joined. Others broke away and headed vaguely in the direction of the nest. What do you know? It's? The crow asked. Sherlock bent his head to look closer. The ants appear to be taking a shorter and shorter time to get back to the nest, he said, wondering. Okay. After a few minutes, there were two parallel lines of ants heading between the honey and the nest. The random wandering had been replaced with a purposeful direction. Good, Crow said approvingly. Now let's try a little experiment. He reached into his pocket and took out a scrap of mm. the size of his palm. He laid it on the ground, halfway between the nest and the honey. The ants crossed the paper back towards the nest as if they hadn't even noticed it. How are they communicating? Sherlock asked. How are the ants who found the honey telling the ones in the nest where it is? They're not, Crow asked. The fact that they are returning with honey is a signal that there's food out there. But they can't talk to each other. They can't read each other's minds. And they can't point with those little legs of theirs. There's something a lot clever going on. Let me show you. Crow reached down and deftly turned the scrap of paper 90 degrees. The ants already on the paper walked off the edge and then seemed lost, wandering aimlessly mm. around. But Sherlock was fascinated to watch the ants who reached the paper, walking across it until they reached halfway, then turning and heading at right angles to their previous path until they came to the edge and then walking off and starting to wander again. They can see, but we can't. Somehow, the first few ants had laid that path down, and the rest followed it. And when you turned the paper around, they kept following the path, not knowing that it was somewhere else. That's right, Crow said. Best guess is that it's some kind of chemical. When the ant is carrying food, it leaves a trail of the chemical behind. Imagine it like a rag covered in something strong, like anise attached to one of their feet, and the other ones, like dogs, have a tendency to follow the anise trail. Because of the drunkard's walk effect, the first ant will wander all over the place before he finds the nest. As more and more ants find the honey, some of them will take longer paths to the nest and some shorter ones. As more ants follow, the shorter paths get reinforced by the chemical because they work better mm -hmm. and because the ants can get back quicker. And the longer 